Welcome back to RFL. We're continuing our conversation on stop and frisk. Before the break, uh, our, our guest, uh, Professor Eli Silverman, was talking about his book, uh, The Crime Numbers Game, and talking about how uh, police have manipulated some of the numbers in the NYPD uh, and how that may have contributed to where we are with stop and frisk right now. Brad, I have the sneaking suspicion that you have something you'd like to say. Yes, and, and I do. I truly like the analogy, uh, metaphor being used of, the, of that orange uh -huh. being squeezed. The one problem with that example is that New York City streets are no orange, okay? New York City streets are filled with drug crimes, gun crimes, domestic violence, all this other stuff, and the police have to be aggressive. Once metrics were put well, into are place- Are they aggressive in every community? Well, yes, but let me just explain, and I'll get to it, is that once those metrics, and I was an assistant district attorney up in the Bronx, so I remember when the metrics were put in place, okay, it was very important, and it was a major reason why crime was able to be detected and, dr and they would be able to have accountability by precinct by precinct. And it was very important. And look, there are always the possibility that any kind of policy at the fringes could get out of whack. But for the most part, the stop and frisk is important. It helps keep the guns off the streets in the areas that are most dangerous. So the fact that it could be that an inordinate amount of African Americans are being frisked and stopped on the streets. However, it is in the neighborhoods that, they're, they're, that the police are trying to protect for the most part. No one else has come up with any other solution to drop crime. And all there are are complaints about what the existing policies are and how they're being implemented. The last thing I want to mention is, yeah, there is a constitutional test as to whether or not a police officer is allowed to approach and uh, stop and detain mm -hmm. any individual. And Every police officer is taught this extensively, so it's not like they're just going out and making up their own rules. And also, the other constitutional uh, piece that's in effect is that if that stop and frisk is impermissible, there is a hearing in court that you would have to, to uh, dismiss the evidence that's, that is uh, apprehended due to an improper stop long, and frisk. Long, long after the fact of the stop itself. Dom? Well, I, I mean, I... I I have great respect for my colleagues, but and I understand you were an assistant district attorney, but I don't know which New York, New York you're talking about because the New York that I know, that I grew up in, I'm going to put it out there. Black people have very few rights. And if a police officer tells you, first of all, you're fortunate if they identify themselves. You're lucky if they identify themselves. Normally, it's get up on the wall or the gun is out. The car cuts you off, drives onto the sidewalk, get up on the wall. That's the New York I grew up in. So I, I don't know which one. That's the one. exception, not the rule, Dominic. And here's okay, the thing I'll, is, I'll and let me also, and let me also that. mention that it's gotten, a, it, not that behavior, but stop and frisk has gotten so many guns off the streets, it has reduced it has reduced homicides and crime in this city, and thankfully so. And we should be thanking our New York City Police Commissioner and Mayor, who I disagree with on probably almost everything except this particular policy. But not to mention the fact that 90% of the murders that were happening were happening uh, against African Americans and Hispanics. So the proof is in the pudding. There's less, less than 50 murders a year now in the city. I'm so, a single so woman folks, living in New York City. You folks wouldn't mind if I it was your community where the cops were throwing your kids up on the wall. Whether they, but where a majority of them didn't do anything wrong, you wouldn't have a problem what's, with them throwing your children up on the wall. It, it's a deterrent, and what's the difference between oh, a DWI deterrent. stop? A deterrent as long as it's the black community. No, no, no. I, I don't think it should it's be anybody. That's a you know, look, anything that's else, done impermissible, over? improperly. Who, who else are they pulling any, over? Dominic, anything that's done improperly by the police is reprehensible and should be and should be addressed. Okay, and that goes in any community. What we're suggesting, at least what I'm suggesting here, is that we, we have to assume the police are out to do the right thing, okay? And when they're not, it needs to be addressed. But when they are, a lot of these policies really do work, and it's proven, it is proven. Professor, even you know, it's proven. The statistics have driven down crime, no yeah, question. The question is, what has driven down the crime? You are making a false premise as far as I'm concerned. The erroneous premise is it's all due to the stop and frisk. The stop and frisk is a part of a very valuable new approach to policing, which I was apps happened to be the first one to write about in my book, NYB, NYP. PD battles crime, innovative strategies in policing. And in it, I talk about stop and frisk and all the other programs. But what I did when I updated that book in, from 1999 to 2001 and said, 
this system is now being turned on its head and it's no longer the system it was. It's not the same system. And you say what alternatives there are? The police no longer have alternatives because the top has controlled it from central. And you ask a commander in confidence, you ask a police officer in confidence whether or not they can address problems in their community with their own discretion, which is, as you well know, is central to a police officer's job. Okay. police discretion. They now lack discretion because everything is dictated from the top. How many arrests, how many summons, they cannot work with the community. In fact, they're pushing the communities away. In all communities where this is appropriate. Oh, no, really get that angry. I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understand, I'm but I think it's an yeah. important point. I'm going to stop it right here. Can you stay Good with us point. another second? Sure.